this is Rachel from Rose Acre Farms, and I hope you guys are having a great morning, or whenever it is you're listening to this. It doesn't have to be morning. I am going to continue, or we're going to continue our study in Joshua chapter 11 today. And as always, we'll be talking to our Heavenly Father before we start and asking Him to reveal whatever it is He would have for us to glean from His Word today. Dear Lord, I just pray today that you would bless our study of Joshua chapter 11 and help us as we read your word to be focused on it and to give you our 100% of our attention and our focus. I just pray that you would bless each one within the sound of my voice and, and everyone even more, dear Lord, but the ones that are listening, dear Lord, I just pray that you would help them to receive the message you want for them to receive today and i just thank you so much for this opportunity and the resource of youtube dear lord to be able to reach out and that we can study your word together with each other even though we might be on completely different sides of the world dear lord i just thank you so much what a neat time to be able to live in to be able to do that and what a great opportunity to share you with the world. And dear Lord, I just love you so much. And I thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for us so that we can have a relationship with you. So we can spend eternity with you. Getting to know you better and better and better every day. In holy name I pray. Amen. We are in Joshua chapter 11 and I'm reading in the HCSB. When Jabin, king of Hazor, heard this news, he sent a message to Jobab, king of Maiden, the kings of Shimron and Akshaph, and the kings of the north and the hill country, the Arabah south of Chimnareth, the Judean foothills, and the slopes of Dor to the west, the Canaanites in the east and west, the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, and Jebusites in the hill country, and the Hivites at the foot of Hermon in the land of Mizpah. They went out with all their armies, a multitude as numerous as the sand on the seashore, along with a vast number of horses and chariots. All these kings joined forces. They came together and camped at the waters of Merom to attack Israel. The Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them, for at this time tomorrow I will cause all of them to be killed before Israel. You are to hamstring their horses and burn up their chariots. So Joshua and his whole military force surprised them at the waters of Merom and attacked them. The Lord handed them over to Israel, and they struck them down, pursuing them as far as great Sidon, and Misrephoth Ma'am, and to the east as far as the valley of Mizpah. They struck them down, leaving no survivors. Joshua treated them as the Lord had told him. He hamstrung their horses and burned up their chariots. At that time, Joshua turned back, captured Hazor, and struck down its king with the sword because Hazor had formerly been the leader of all these kingdoms. They struck down everyone in it with the sword, completely destroying them. He left no one alive. Then he burned down Hazor. Joshua captured all these kings and their cities and struck them down with the sword. He completely destroyed them as Moses the Lord's servant had commanded. However, Israel did not burn any of the cities that stood on their mounds except Hazor, which Joshua burned. The Israelites plundered all the spoils and cattle of these cities for themselves, but they struck down every person with the sword until they had annihilated them, leaving no one alive. Just as the Lord had commanded his servant Moses, Moses commanded Joshua, that is what Joshua did, leaving nothing undone of all that the Lord had commanded Moses. So Joshua took all this land, 
the hill country, all the Negev, all the land of Goshen, the foothills, the Arabah, and the hill country of Israel with its foothills, from Mount Halak, which ascends to Sire, as far as Baal Gad and the valley of Lebanon, at the foot of Mount Hermon. He captured all their kings and struck them down, putting them to death. Joshua waged war with all these kings for a long time. No city made peace with the Israelites except the Hivites, who inhabited Gibeon. All of them were taken in battle, for it was the Lord's intention to harden their hearts, so that they would engage Israel in battle. He completely destroyed without mercy and be annihilated, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. At that time, Joshua proceeded to exterminate the Anakim from the hill country, Hebron, Debir, Anab, all the hill country of Judah and of Israel. Joshua completely destroyed them with their cities. No Anakim were left in the land of the Israelites, except for some remaining in Gaza, Gath, and Ashdod. So Joshua took the entire land in keeping with all that the Lord had told Moses. Joshua then gave it as an inheritance to Israel, according to their tribal allotments. After this, the land had rest for more. Joshua chapter 11, what I got out of that, I just kind of made some notes here. If you'll leave in the comments whatever it is that, that you saw in there that maybe I don't bring out, then we can share together and grow together in God's word. When King Jabin of Hazor heard that Israel's army was coming his way, I think he was probably pretty scared. So he contacted some other kings. He contacted the kings of Maiden, Akshaf, Shimron, and the northern kings. And so they joined together to fight against Israel. But God once again tells Joshua, Hey, don't worry. Be brave. You're going to win this battle. And so when Jabin heard of Israel's victory over the south, he, he gets this large army together. So he's hoping to stop Israel. Israel was going to face some new challenges now. This army had very many horses and chariots. God encouraged Joshua and said for them not to be afraid. Joshua did exactly what God told him to do. He cut the legs of the horses. He burned their chariots with fire. Joshua left nothing undone. It says that God hardened their hearts. So I wanted to read in Romans 1 verse 24 through 28. Therefore God delivered them over in the cravings of their hearts to sexual impurity so that their bodies were degraded among themselves. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served something created instead of the Creator, who is praised forever. Amen. This is why God delivered them over to degrading passions, for even their females exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. The males in the same way also loved natural relations with females and were inflamed in their lust for one another. Males committed shameless acts with males and received in their own persons the appropriate penalty of their error. And because they did not think it worthwhile to acknowledge God, God delivered them over to a worthless mind to do what is morally wrong. When someone wants to keep sinning and sinning, God will eventually harden their hearts. He lets the sin that's in their hearts, He lets that take control. It's already there and God gets weary of trying to deal with that and He'll just let their hearts go ahead and be hardened. God deals with all men's hearts but his grace either hardens or softens the heart. Joshua came and cut off the Anakim from the mountains. So 40 years earlier, you go back 40 years, Joshua and Caleb and 10 other people, Israelites, Moses sent to spy out the land of Canaan, right? Joshua and Caleb were two of those spies. All of the spies saw these giants, right? 
Well, the ten spies came back and they're like, we can't take them. They're too big, too powerful. Joshua and Caleb were like, we've got God on our side. What are you talking about? But now we have Joshua face to face, going to be face to face with these these giants. The reason that so many of the, the, the Israelites didn't get to go in because they didn't have faith that God could take them there. But Joshua and Caleb got to go into the promised land. They were rewarded for their faith. Joshua wasn't scared of the Anakim then, and he's still not scared. So, at the end of this though, we see that the land rested from war. And that's actually the part that stands out to me here as God gives them peace for a while. Even through the battles, I think they had peace because they were just winning battles left and right. But that's the part that stands out to me is the peace that God gives. And even right now, our, our nation is going through a lot, a lot of stuff. And I'm not even going to talk about any of that because that, this channel is to bring glory to God and Him only. Um, but... Our nation's going through a lot of stuff, but I think through all of that, we can still have peace because God's on our side. God's on the side of right, and He is going to give us peace in our hearts anyway. There may not, there may be some struggles and things that we have to go through, and we may have to take stands, but God, if He's on our side, we don't have anything to worry about. All right, so I hope you guys have a great day today, and I hope you're enjoying our study of Joshua. Don't forget to subscribe, and that way, um, if you hit the bell, then you'll know each day when I put out the video. I'm going to try to put one out each morning, so you'll have one each day, and I will see y'all tomorrow. Bye-bye.